Greetings, fellow makers. Welcome to the live stream or live from the shop today at uh, our Twitch channel. I'm Bill. I'm going to be finishing, hopefully finishing, the Fatebringer gun. We've got two other videos where we worked on this kit. This is a kit from Z Props. If you want in on this kind of thing, we'll have a link to his shop below where you can buy your own kit. Last week, we added this swing arm here so we can uh, have the cylinder pop out all cool like but today I'm going to be painting it now in between last week and this week I did a tiny bit of work everything is primed so I sanded everything nice and smooth uh, and then I primed it with just a rattle can spray paint and I modified the cylinder a tiny bit so I put a bearing in there and there's a pin that runs through and just for holding it I'll put it on this towel uh, that way it'll spin oh it spins so so nice so that's uh, the modification I made up until now. I'm ready to paint it. A couple more things here. I laser cut some tiny orange pieces from orange acrylic. And instead of painting all the parts on the gun orange, I'm gonna glue these on. That'll be one of the last steps, I think. So those are all laser cut. I just uh, got some acrylic, made some little template pieces and cut them out. So those will be waiting in the wings. And I'm going to be trying out some new painting techniques that I just learned in these books. These were a recommendation from my pal Sean Charlesworth. They are from Rinaldi Studio Press. Uh, we'll have a link down in the uh, show notes. But they go over some really cool model painting techniques. Really great photographs. These things are fantastic. So I'm going to try out some of those techniques today. We'll see how it goes. Never done them before, but it should be fun. The first thing we'll do is lay down a base coat of color. This is going to be basically what these pieces would be made out of. And I've got a gun metal. These are uh, Tamiya acrylic paints here. This one I've already thinned it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Apparently you can also thin it with lacquer thinner. Haven't tried that yet, but I might experiment a bit. Uh, that's all in the airbrush here, just a darker gun metal color. So everything's going to get that base color and we'll add paint on top of that. But for now, we just need some dark metal color. So. I just have my airbrush and I'm just laying down a base color on everything. In fact, I could do this. That's not, not as good as I had hoped. Just trying to get coverage as even as possible. Okay, cool. So there's one piece now with that dark metallic sheen on the bottom of there. I can help it dry a little bit with my hair dryer. Whoop. Pretty cool. So I'm going to hang this up and go spray paint on the rest of my pieces. Some of these smaller pieces I put on sort of a pegboard here. I just put some finishing nails through it so that I could put them on there while they dry. But to paint them so that I make sure I get all the sides, I'll just put a nail through it and then I can paint it like so. Now that it's all painted, I can put it back on this nail. I'll hit it with a hair dryer to help it dry a little bit, and then I'll put it on the nail. Now I can grab it from the part down here. I'm not worried about messing up the paint on that. So I just grab it like that, put it on there, and then I can move on to the next thing. This guy gets put on the nail, and then I can paint that. Here is the base color done on the, on the main part of the gun. Uh, this is the gun metal. It'll just get, uh, we'll let it dry, and then this is all gonna get sealed with a flat lacquer. So that's what I'm gonna do next, but I'm gonna go hang this up and let it dry. Of course, I can accelerate the process a little bit, help it on its way with my hair dryer. Up next, we're gonna clear coat everything to protect this base coat. And for that, we've got a flat clear lacquer. That's gonna go over everything, so I've just loaded it up in my airbrush and then we just spray it on everything. The reason why we're doing this is because we're gonna be putting layers of paint on top of this and then removing those layers of paint and this will protect it and keep our the stuff we do later from chewing all the way through this base coat. So we're just gonna do this. Make sure everything gets a nice coat of this flat clear lacquer. There we go, nice and protected. 
especially any of the parts, like I said, that are going to get paint layered on top of them. Before we move on, some of these pieces need a little bit of masking. So I've got my masking tape here and this end bit there is just going to get a little bit of tape wrapped around it. That part we want to stay completely that gunmetal color. So if I'm looking at the reference image, there's, there's some spots in there that should also stay silver. So I'll mask those off as well. Like so. Go around it. So those are the parts that are going to get masked off right there. Now uh, I can paint the rest of my layers on top of it. Before we spray on our next layer of color, I've got my sort of dirty orange brownish color ready to go. We're going to hit this with hairspray. You heard me right. We've got some hairspray. Uh, we're going to do hairspray chipping on this color and first we have to put hairspray on it. So here we go. I want to go for as fine a mist as possible. So I'm holding it kind of far away. Like that. And then we can hair dry it just like you would with your hairspray. There we go. Once the hairspray is dry, you can put the color on top of it. So in this case, I've got my brown ready to go. And I'll probably do this in a couple of layers. Mostly because I want them to dry quickly. Uh, let's go a little bit more right there. Alright, cool. So that is all of that layer of color. It looks pretty good. Again, we can hair dry it. But for now, I'm going to set this aside to dry and I will hairspray and I will do the base color on the rest of my parts. I'm masking off all the parts here that need to stay gunmetal. Uh, and there's a little indent right there, or outdent, I should say, protrusion sort of thing, um, that is like this little triangle. And I'm just outlining it with this metal tool as I'm masking to get a nice sharp edge when I paint that. But there's that triangle right there. Let's get an outline on that. That part needs to be, not gunmetal, it needs to be the color we're going to spray. So I'm going to use this X-Acto and carefully cut out that triangle. And I'm kind of following the, uh, the inner crease that it has with the blade, like so. And I can look carefully peel out that little triangle. So now that area right there, a little shiny spot will get sprayed with my paint and the rest of it will stay gunmetal. I've masked off everything on the gun body that needs to be the sort of orangish color. It's just a masking tape and now this is going to get the hairspray treatment. So just double checking that my masking is good on everything. And we can spray it with hairspray. Now I'm going to go ahead and again and double check that my masking all looks good and then I'm going to put my color on. So I've got just my airbrush with color and we're just going to go nuts with it. There we go, that's a pretty good first layer. Once our paint has dried, we can actually remove the uh, masking. Or can I? <laughs> yeah, there it goes. So that part's got that nice gunmetal color on it. That'll stay like that. Um, this part here should be the same. Like so. It actually pulled some paint up right there, you can see. But we're going to weather this, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, however, we can now do the paint chipping with the hairspray I was telling you about. So I've got a cup here that's Windex and water. Uh, you can probably just do it with water, but I've been playing around with the Windex. It's about a 50-50 mix here. I got a crappy old brush 
and I'm going to start brushing away at this with a slightly damp. So I'm going to get a little bit of water and then brush it off on a uh, paper towel like that and then just slowly start working at the edges. And what you end up doing is kind of bathing an area with the mixture there and then using your brush to scrape at the paint until it starts pulling away the top layer, the very top layer. And it's kind of a subtle effect that takes a little time to get going, but once it does, it starts to pull away the paint really well. It's, it's dissolving that uh, hairspray below. You can see it, it would become very easy to go a little bit overboard which I think I went a little bit nuts that time. You can see, kind of see there. So, again, we just kind of work at the edges. I can even put some of that on and just let it kind of do its thing. And then if I brush at it with a paper towel, that'll start to wear at the edge a bit. And uh, this is the kind of technique that you can totally just kind of sneak up on, as Frank Ippolito would say. And do a little bit. It's definitely really easy to overdo it. Again, this is my first time trying this technique and it is super easy to overdo it. But the idea is you're making it look like the paint has worn down to that silver or the gunmetal below. Like that. So the edges are going to get hit a little bit harder like that. Uh, yep. So, a little crazy there, still kind of learning, but this is a really cool technique. The main gun body is all painted here, and now I can take all this masking tape off. And we can see where all the time I spent putting masking tape on paid off. And one little spot right there, looks good. So the, the end of this is going to definitely be like, dinged up a bunch. So that's going to get lots of chipping. Yeah, so that's really like a spot right there would really be kind of worn off. Like so. There's a nice worn edge look right there. So I'll just keep doing that all over this gun. So we've gone over the entire gun on all of our painted parts and done a bunch of edge weathering with that, that hairspray chipping technique. Um, and it's, it is kind of subtle. I went a little overboard in some spots, but it's really cool. It's, it's hard to get that uh, achievement any other way. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh, the next thing I have to do on this, I'm going to mask off the handle and paint that black. So that's just going to be with the airbrush. And then I can glue this together and do the weathering. I went and masked off just the handle to do the last bit of painting here. And in my airbrush, I've got a flat black paint. And there's a specific reason for the flat black. We'll get to that in a in a little bit. But first, I gotta paint everything black. So there's the black. There's before. So to finish off the handle, it's this flat black color. I went with a flat black because it's kind of got some tooth to it. And we're gonna rub some graphite powder on it. So this is what it looks like all done with that nice sort of shine on it. And then this is the flat black. So. The way we do that is, I have a graphite stick, just got that at the art store, grind up a bunch of graphite into a powder, then I take my paper towel and just load it up with a bunch of graphite powder, and then all you have to do is brush it onto your piece, and that flat paint will pick up that graphite and give it that really nice sheen, like so. That's all you gotta do like that. Throw that away. Get my flat lacquer. I've got my clear flat lacquer here and I can just go over this whole thing to protect it so that graphite doesn't rub off on my hands. There we go. It does dull it a little bit, but it's still got some of that nice shine on it there. It gives it a little bit more depth than just having a flat color, black color on there. 
Okay, we can take the masking off of this. See how our handle looks compared to everything else. Whoop. Um, cool, I think I'm ready to start gluing some things together. So, let's start with, well, I've also got these little orange parts. Maybe I start with those. Try very hard not to lose those. Um, the backs of these have already been sanded, which is nice. Uh, let's do the barrel, actually. This is the barrel part that's going to go in there. So, I'm going to just uh, rough that up a little bit with a little sanding stick. And then I'll super glue it in. A little bit of super glue on that is all it takes. I'm going to set this piece in here, this laser cut piece, and center it the best I can. That looks pretty good right there. That guy. And then this gets glued in there, like that. So again, the back of this is already sanded, but I'm going to go in and sand this with a sanding stick, sanding twig. Put our piece in there. I'm going to put my giant head in the way. Like that. And there's our barrel. This is fun. This is the part we get to rapidly put things together. And it's so much fun. This part here needs to get glued down. I've sanded the surfaces so that I've got a nice positive lock right there. So. We just goober this all up with some super glue. Like so. That's about it. Kind of smear it around a bit. And I'm double checking with the reference image that I'm at least close to the right position. And I just sort of push it down and hold it until it fully cures. There we go. That feels like it's on there. Cool. Um, the last little bit of tiny details are these guys here so those will get glued in so real quick I'll show you again just scraping out some paint like that put down a little bit of super glue like that and then for this I've got some tweezers and that helps a bunch like that press it down there we go just got to do five more I've got to pin the hammer so this lines up perfectly. This is a little piece of a finishing nail that I trimmed up and that should go straight through. It's going to be snug but it should go all the way through and I don't need that. Uh, I'll just use the end of this and pin the hammer in place and it should be able to then rotate around. Oh. All right, I'm going to tap it, tap it gently with a hammer. So the hammer can move. I just need to pop that in a tiny bit more, and I'll just use another finishing nail. Smash it with a hammer. Cool. Like that. This part here goes through the bearing. Let's line that up. Nice and snug so it can spin. And then that gets glued into the hole there. I'm going to put glue in there. All right. And I'm going to knock that over. Very important step. And then this goes in there, and we just hold it in place. It's pretty good. Just like that. Look at that. That's pretty cool. And then our ammo thing ugh, goes in there. The whole thing closes. <laughs> How cool is that? Time for weathering. I've already started on this here. Um, I've got these oil mixable uh, or water mixable oil paints here that I like a lot for this kind of greasy kind of mechanical looking weathering. Uh, I've just got some brown and some black here to do mostly just like add some contrast to, to the part. Uh, so you can see there is before 
nice and dirty. Or I'm sorry, that's after. I've been streaming for four and a half hours. Uh, this is after, and that's before. I'll show you. I'll show you what we did. So I'm just going over and adding a bunch of the paint, making sure to get it down into the crevices, really where the grime is going to accumulate. And I'm not being shy about it either, because I'm going to wipe most of this away. So just a little bit of brown, a little bit of black, kind of mixing it up a little bit, really spreading it out, making sure it's in those crevices like that, and then I take my paper towel and wipe most of that away. These paints are great, you can really kind of smear them. You have a lot of time to work with them, they take forever to dry. They, they rub right off of that orange, which is awesome, that orange acrylic. Just like so. So there it is, I work a little bit at a time and kind of do that same thing over the entire gun. There you go. I got more of these to do, Whee! Nothing too sophisticated on this paint job. I'm just covering all the cracks and seams with more of this paint here and then wiping most of it away. I find that a uh, Q-tip is also a really good way to kind of clean up some of the spots in here. And then with these water mixable paints in particular, um, if the paint is lingering a little bit more than you want it to, you can just take a damp cloth and just kind of gently wipe down the surfaces and it should pick up anything extra. There we go. So that looks nice and dirty. Some good contrast going on there. Just a little bit more and this thing's ready to go. There it is, all done and painted. For those at home uh, watching along, this stream took about five hours, five hours and 20 minutes to be exact for all of that work, but I think it's worth it. I'm super happy with how it turned out. I've got this mechan mechanism, got this guy here, so that pops out, I've got my ammo, that I can pop out like that, and then I can reload it like that, and then go like this like a badass. <laughs> and then be ready to shoot again, ha! Ah! Well, there you go, everybody. That is the Fatebringer from Z Props. It's all done, all painted up, ready to go. I will, of course, take better photos and pictures and video and, and splice that into the video right now so you guys can be like, ooh, that's awesome. But there it is, all finished up. This is a three-part series. If you just joined us for this one, go back watch the first two parts that we did all on our live stream over on Twitch. It was really fun. Thank you, everyone, who joined me on the live stream while we were doing it. You guys are great. Boom! There it is. Thanks again so much for hanging out with me today, you guys. This was a lot of fun to put together. This is going up on the wall with the rest of my fun Destiny props, and I think it'll look pretty great up there. Um, that's it. That's all I got for today. <laughs> I'm gonna be taking a break from live streaming for two weeks. We're going on vacation, so um, just know that's why we're not there. And I'll see you all in a couple of weeks right here on our live Twitch channel. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.